I have a second channel, Cube Compium DDX. Hey everybody, so here we have one of those Optiplex 390 systems. Uh, we're going to actually get this one up and going. So this um, is system number 7. So in the previous video where I went through these, I uh, numbered them 1 through 8. And I went through each and did some quick troubleshooting to figure out what was wrong with them. And number 7 here has a uh, bad power supply. So we're going to take out that power supply, put in a good power supply. Install some memory. This one has a hard drive in it still, so uh, we're going to test that and uh, make sure it's good. I may even try booting it up with the existing hard drive in it to see what happens. Now, if it displays any company information, I'm not going to be able to share that on here in the video. I've got four gigabytes of DDR3. I'm going to pop in here. I got a uh, PCI Express wireless adapter on the way because where this computer's going. Um, it's only going to have access to Wi-Fi, so we'll have to uh, install a uh, PCI Express Wi-Fi adapter. This ordered out on Amazon. It should be arriving this evening. Yeah, it's nice to see Amazon is a. Uh, it's nice to have the uh, the the one day shipping and sometimes same day shipping back. And yeah, there for a while, the pandemic kind of put a stop to that. And, uh, get this in there and. Let's get this power supply out of here and I think I'm going to open these units up in a different video just to see if I can spot anything going on with them so uh, I took a peek inside one that wasn't starting up I mean, power supply and the crazy thing is I, I couldn't find any uh, failed capacitors at least um, from a visual inspection so not really sure what's going on there I mean, worst case, worst case scenario, I just junked the units. But, uh, maybe we could fix them, I don't know. And of course, Dell, they just had to route these uh, cables in such a way that you gotta work a good bit to get them out. I mean, dang. <laughs> so, Although some of the uh, card codes on these wires are different than the ATX standard, this unit is in fact wired um, correctly. So you can drop in an off-the-shelf ATX power supply just fine on this. There for a while, um, Dell systems, you could, as I think I've shown in previous videos, you can, you can actually just rebuild stuff in their cases. And their power supplies were 100% ATX compatible. But then came along um, the uh, the BTX standard, and then Dell started building their own. Dell started building their own style uh, systems and making them proprietary. And this one, at first glance, it seems like it, it seemed like it was a kind of setup where you could just drop a motherboard in from wherever and reuse the case. But apparently, it's not quite the case due to the way that uh, the front panel connections and stuff are wired up. Now, if I really wanted to, I could redo all that. Um, but considering many of these cases are kind of beat up, it's not really worth the effort, in my opinion. So, let's go ahead and get this uh, power supply out of there. Okay, so there's the original power supply. There's your look at the spec label. It's a uh, chickeny power unit uh, manufactured for Dell. 265 watts, I think, is what it says for its rating. Now, if I look inside of it, I'm just coming here to the back door and looking through it where I got plenty of sunlight. At first glance, I'm not seeing. Wait. 
Actually, I think this one may have a bone cap. So maybe I'll, maybe that's all these need is a recap. So I have four of them to fix. <laughs> so let's go ahead and drop in this solar power supply I have. This is a uh, FSP unit. Similar wattage and output. This is actually a 300 watt. So a little, a little more appropriate for this unit. Well, I mean, 250, 265 watts will run it. It does have a 95 watt TDP Core i5 in there, though. But I'll be honest with you, uh, back in the day, back when the uh, Prescott Pentium 4s were coming out, OEMs like HP and E Machines, they were uh, they were dropping in 250 watt units in those machines, and uh, quite frankly, those 250 watt units were not very total heavy, but they still ran it. Okay, so got a nice little uh, mess of wires here. Gotta pop some zip ties so that way I can redo this wiring a bit. I'm gonna I'll focus on tidying up the wiring later on. Now I just want to get the thing to where it can actually start up and run. I think this I think this power supply actually came out of an Acer tower. Yeah, because Acer was using FSP at least there for a while. Okay, good, I just want to make sure that these uh, cables would reach. And we'll see what is pretty nice about these OEM units is although they don't give you much in the way of wiring and sometimes their wiring is a mess um, the wiring is usually oriented at least the links and everything are usually oriented to where they just drop right into a system like this and you don't have too much in the way of wiring to have to put off the side and tidy up or whatever so um, this one is for feeding the hard drives. Let's plug that in right there. And I'll go ahead and tuck this wiring inside these little cable holders. We got our 20 plus 4 pin, which is going right there. Let's get that situated. Yeah, it's nice. This uh, this OEM FSP unit is actually a 20 plus four pin. Well, these OEM units that were 24 pins, they were strictly just 24 pins. You couldn't split the extra four off and use a power supply on a 20 pin motherboard. But that's becoming less and less of an issue now because pretty much all modern motherboards have 24 pin main connectors. At least the uh, units that follow the HX standard. I'm going to even get into the. Uh, ATX 12BO. <laughs> uh, plug this in over here. Like I say, I'll have to come back and tidy up the wires the rest of the way later on. Right now, I'm just I'm primarily interested in getting this thing running. Okay, so everything's plugged in. Let's see if this thing's going to start up. Oh yeah, let's not forget. Uh, Got to actually uh, put the screws in the uh, case for the power supply. Yeah, the case has a little holder there for the unit power supply. It kind of holds it in place, but you definitely want to use the. Uh, Definitely put the screws back in. The thing I don't like about this case is the power supply is recessed into it, so it makes it more difficult to get the dang screws in. Okay, now let's uh give this thing a try right, 
let's see here. It's starting up on its own. The previous fan failure. <laughs> I think I got the same message last time. If it keeps popping up like that, I'm going to have to figure out how to clear that. You can see it's running. And, uh, I'm not sure why this one wants to start up by itself. Most of them didn't. Could be a, uh, a, uh, fire setting. So, let's see, uh, post behavior. So yeah, it is. It was actually configured to turn on by itself. So I'm gonna disable that. That would explain why it's uh, turning itself on. Shut off by itself and turn back on by itself. <clears throat> Alright, let's see if this thing has an OS still on it. Okay, I'm going to figure out how to clear this message. I don't need it to pop up every single time. Alright, let's press uh, 2 again. So I'm going to clear this log here. So, <laughs> it's got logs all the way back. You know, it's funny, the logs have never been cleared on this thing. It's got logs all the way back to 2013. We'll clear it. Ah, so it looks like I have Windows 10 on it already. Um, so, interesting. And of course, it's uh, not bootable. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna check the health of the hard drive, see if it's good. And if it is, I'm gonna wipe it and then uh, I'll do a clean install Windows 10 on it. Okay, so I got the uh, Hard drive connected to the Plexi. Yeah, let's see what we have here. So this is the drive in particular. So this computer, you can tell from this drive data that the, you know, this computer is like my computers, at least the Mid-Tower Lux. It uh, runs all the time unless there's like a power outage so you can see this hard drive has only been powered on 222 times but it has almost 73,000 hours on it yeah <laughs> that's the thing I've noticed about hard drives is they st they tend to last longer when you aren't power cycling the computer all the time uh, that's one of the reasons why I leave my system on is uh, try to, to extend the uh, life of the hard drives. I mean, the hard drives in the Tower Lux are from 2013 or 2015, roughly, and uh, I'm eventually going to have to get new drives for it because it's starting to run low on space, but uh, I mean, the drives have been going for all this time, and of course, that machine runs constantly. So, 
that being said, I'm going to go ahead and wipe this drive, and it's going to take a little while to do, so um, once it's finished doing that, then I'll go ahead and start installing Windows 10 on this thing. Okay, everybody, so off camera, I swapped up the power supply again because that FSP unit, it, had, it just had this horrible high-pitched squeal, as you may have heard in the previous video clip. Um, not sure what the deal is with it. Uh, all the caps didn't look fine. I was able to, at least while I was able to see through the grill in it, but I uh, got this 300 watt high pro here that's been recapped at some point. Um, so it should be good. Had to uh, replace one of the uh, connectors on it because it didn't have enough SATA leads. So I had some spare SATA leads. I just uh, spliced and soldered some in. And that, that way the uh, CD drive, or excuse me, the DVD drive can have power. So, uh, for some weird reason, this thing still comes on by itself, um, as you'll see in a sec. Also, the uh, Wi-Fi card came in from Amazon that came in, uh, right, I guess about 6 or 7 o'clock it came in, so not bad. Uh, got that dropped in, so go ahead and switch the uh, KVM switch back over. Watch, it'll come back home by itself. Yep. As you see, no bootable device, blah, blah, blah. It's going to set up because I want to see again why this thing is turning on by itself. AC recovery, that would be why right there. Power off. <clears throat> Apply that. And also, while we're in here, we need to make some additional changes. So let's get you a closer look at the screen there. So this thing, I believe, uh, does support UEFI boot. I mean, the hard drive that was in it. No, excuse me, the hard drive that's in it uh, did indeed have a uh, GPT partition on it. So let's go ahead and uh, set that up. So boot list option is set to UEFI. Boot sequence uh, when this boot manager. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll plug in our USB drive. You see if we can get Windows 10 on here and install it using a GPT. Okay, uh, let's see here. This flash drive may not be set up right. Who knows? Let's see. Yeah, it is okay. Not sure why I didn't pick that up by itself. Beats me, but uh, I'm going to let it load up here and we'll get one of 10 installed. Yeah, that power supply center now is nice and quiet. No, uh, no freaking squeal. I mean, that, that that FSP unit, maybe it's just old and tired. Don't know the whole story. Maybe maybe some of the caps in it have failed, but they didn't bulge on top. That happens sometimes. So I mentioned, this is a Windows 10 21 
H2 I'm putting on here. I just uh, I had just downloaded it and copied the files over to my USB drive. Now this time I'm going to skip entering the product key because this thing may already have a digital license. So I'm going to skip. I'm going to actually just say I don't have a product key. I'm going to choose Windows 10 Pro because the Windows 7 sticker on here is a Windows 7 Pro sticker. I'm just going to assume that they uh, may have used a uh, Pro license. If for any reason it doesn't activate, I can go ahead and put that key in later. Some people like to say, oh, I'll just click next and it'll do it for you. Well, it's better to review what it does here because sometimes, if you have, especially have multiple hard drives in the machine, it'll do some weird things. Um, it'll put your recovery partition, which contains your boot files, on one drive, and then it'll put your uh, actual uh, system partition on a separate drive. I mean, it's done it before, I've seen it do it. So, as you can see, we are indeed setting up as a G, uh, GPT um, partition. So, select next, and we'll just let Windows install. Okay, so I guess I'm going to finish set up here. And the, the typical. And let's see if our Wi Fi adapter is working here. Yep, sure is. I'm not going to connect just yet. The reason why I don't connect right now is to bypass the uh, Microsoft account garbage. Turn off all this stuff. And the race is on to kill one drive before it installs. thing yeah this is this is what you get with the hard disk drive sometimes you can actually kill it just in time before it even begins to install but it's already starting there so we gotta kill it there I'm also going to be setting a look group policy on this machine to not use OneDrive because this the application is going to be getting used for, but you don't want to have OneDrive running anyway. So, uh, yeah, guys, so this is my first time doing a clean install of uh, 21H2. So, you got this little built in news thing right here, which, uh, is an update that installs on older builds of Windows 10. Okay, so let's go ahead and uh, connect this to, to the uh, network.
Okay, so um, from this point on, it's going to be pretty much uh, just setting up this machine for its um, for what's going to be getting used for. So, anyways, um, that is uh, that was setting up one of these uh, computers from that uh, lot of uh, Octoplex 390s. So you can see we got one that's working now. Um, yeah, so it looks like we're good to go on this one. So anyways, hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. Well everybody, that wraps up for this video. And I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please like the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the computer channel. And be sure to tick that bell so you get notified when new videos are posted. Also, don't forget, I have a whole lot of other interesting videos here on the channel to check out. And also, in addition, I have a second channel, CubeComp MTDX, where I have all sorts of other videos not exactly related to technology. Links to the channels are available at the end of this video. Again, I thank you for your support and thanks for watching this video.